Really, most shooters are using light machine guns no different than the minigun in the original Doom. This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this episode, Jonathan discusses the history of the light machine gun, how they differ from heavy machine guns, and of course, how well they work in video games. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe for more videos featuring Jonathan, and if you'd like to help out the Royal Armies Museum and continue to support Jonathan's work, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, over to Jonathan. A light machine gun, as the name implies, is lighter than a heavy machine gun. You bastards! <laughs> when, when machine guns were first created, they were just machine guns. So automatic weapons that fire for as long as you held down the trigger or the firing button or whatever, or ran out of ammunition. Hey, player! Drop the chips and get me some ammo! But they began to diversify, as most things do over time. Well, actually, very early on, um, Hiram Maxim, who invented the first machine gun, which would later be become known as a heavy machine gun, because it's big, heavy, and stays where it is until a team of guys move it to the next location. Ain't nothing but nothing over here. Maxim also works on what would become the light machine gun. So uh, smaller, more portable, and physically lighter forms of the machine gun, which, if necessary, one guy can operate. And that's probably the best way to think about a light machine gun. It's an automatic weapon automatic military weapon that one guy, or a team of two at most, carries with them into battle, into the action, moving forwards. So the, the other distinction, the other way to think about it is, so the British Vickers machine gun was our standard machine gun before there was such a thing as a heavy or a light machine gun. And then the Lewis gun was brought into British service in the First World War. The Vickers machine guns, the heavy water-cooled belt-fed machine guns, were taken from the infantry squad into a dedicated machine gun corps and used as effectively miniature artillery pieces uh, at like strategic level, which left the light machine guns, the Lewis guns, as part of the infantry squad. So a light machine gun is part of the infantry squad and it supports the rifles uh, and any other weapons that might be in the squad. And you'll typically have one light machine gun per squad. Squad can be anything from eight to 12 men, depending on the period and the country, but you're always gonna have some sort of firepower. Different countries did it different ways, but most of them had some form of machine gun in the squad. Now what makes things complicated is the general purpose machine gun. So in the Second World War, that squad machine gun wasn't technically a light machine gun, it was a general purpose machine gun, because you could set that thing up like a heavy machine gun, or you could carry it like a light machine gun, which is how it was more often used. So in practical purposes, it was still a light machine gun. Enemy spotted! <laughs> Doesn't matter how it's fed, doesn't ha it can be magazine fed, belt fed, doesn't actually matter what calibre it is. The Villar Perosa, what most people think of as a submachine gun, was actually used by the Italians as a light machine gun. So like most types of firearms, it's a combination of its role, what it's designed to do. So it's a squad machine gun, support weapon, but not, a, not higher up like a company level gun, like a heavy machine gun. And it's also the technical capabilities of it, so it must have automatic fire, and it nearly always has rifle caliber ammunition as well. So it's a very, very long-winded answer to what is, on one level, a very simple question. It's a lighter machine gun than a heavy machine gun, um, but also quite a nuanced question in terms of how different countries have used machine guns over time.
From the perspective of somebody who knows about guns and has played quite a few games in my time, the light machine gun has always been a bit of a weird fit for, well, it's typically a first person shooter, maybe a third person shooter that you're using a light machine gun in. They're constrained by, by genre, really, unless, you, unless you've got a full on tactical shooter where you're communicating with your team and you're using something approximating tactics and you need suppressive fire to actually have an effect on the enemy, whether they're AI that, that respond to bullets hitting near them or whether it's human players afraid of taking damage. Unless you have all of that, the light machine gun is relegated to being a super assault rifle. It's just an assault rifle with more bullets. And that's why we see sometimes they're relegated, like the Call of Duty games are a classic example of this, they're nerfed effectively. So you, you might fire a battle rifle, which is a term I don't, don't like, but a, a full power cartridge firing automatic rifle. You fire that and the bullets from that do more damage than the ones from the equivalent LMG. I've seen that before. Because they have to, because otherwise you would just carry the light machine gun around and nothing else. Some go for more, that they try to, to make them work within a tactical sphere, if you like, but it doesn't quite work. So the battlefield games, if you're support, you, you, can, you can put suppressive fire and it has an effect. Um, that, that probably works better than, than most games. Really, most shooters are using light machine guns no different than the minigun in the original Doom. It's just a very high capacity, relatively high rate of fire, rifle, machine gun, whatever. They all fire bullets at the end of the day. If you'd like to support Jonathan and the work at the Royal Armouries, check out the links in the description where you can donate, become a member, pick up Jonathan's new book, or subscribe to the Royal Armouries themselves. Thank you so much for watching.